In Between San and Insanity is a brand new short uh, format documentary from Corona Studios that's directed by Arthur Namir. The docu-film teams up with world-renowned South African environmentalist and pro-surfer Frank Solomon and captures his journey to connect with the San people. The film also sees him escape the noise of the modern world to the Namib Desert to seek guidance and wisdom. Well, Frank joins us now on Zoom to tell us more about the making of this documentary. Frank, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. I mean, tell us about how In Between Sen and Insanity short film came about. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, thanks for having me. Um, you know, for me, during the, the heavy lockdown that we had um, initially, uh, my, my whole life kind of been based about being outside and traveling, exploring, and to be confined to your room for, you know, there's no choice of your own for months on end. It really started to have an effect on me mentally. I was, you know, constantly hours of a day staring at my phone, staring at my screen, and I just started thinking, like, I really needed to get away, get away from screens, the internet, um, all these things that seemed to have sucked me in during that time. So, yeah, that was kind of where the idea came about. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how this documentary captures how it really is to be living off land without the modern day comforts, you know, such as technology. Yeah, I mean, well, we didn't have any. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you, when you go and there's no reception whatsoever, you know, normally you're like walking around on hills trying to find cell phone reception or if your battery dies, people get so upset that their iPhone's dead, but... I think when you arrived there, there was zero reception, so you had no chance of looking at your phone or looking at your computer. And I thought it would be really difficult, but I don't know, the fact that you know that there's no chance you're going to get it, it kind of makes it seem okay and, and you just forget about it pretty quickly. Mm. Talk to us about working alongside Arthur. How did that come about? Arthur and I have worked together on a, a couple of projects with mm -hmm. Corona. Um, we did the Corona Street Surfers together. And, um, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. And we were chatting during lockdown, texting each other, just kind of, you know, trying to think of something, something cool that we could do to get out of the city to, to try and immerse ourselves in nature for a long period. And uh, that's how, kind of how this project came about. Mm. Arthur's amazing. He gets incredible shots, as you can see in the film. And, yeah, it's great working with him. And I mean, what lessons came with it? I mean, you touched a little bit about how you just know there's no technology, there's nothing I can do about this situation. But it also forces you to sort of reflect on yourself to say, okay, what now? What, where to from here? What personal lessons came with being part of this? Um, yeah, you know, I, I, um, there were a lot of lessons, I think. One of the main ones, I think, that was that the, the people like, really embraced their family Mm -hmm. I think we can live quite isolated lives in this time. You know, people live in apartments on like the 10th floor by themselves. And um, just seeing how they lived in like a family unit, they all, you know, if there's any issues, they talk about it. They're, they're together, they're a tribe. Um, everyone seemed really happy. And, and um, I think for me, like just connecting to my family as well, um, that was a big lesson for me to talk to people, to, you know, not keep your emotions bottled up. Mm -hmm. And the people, the sand people, I mean, what kind of people uh, are we talking about here and the uh, human interaction uh, with them as well? Yeah, the sand people. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, talk to us about those interactions. I mean, we're watching your interaction with them. You're walking yeah. uh, there with them as well. Talk to us about those, that interaction between the two of you. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was really special when we first arrived there. Um, obviously, we had to have a translator. Um, luckily, he was really good, so things didn't get kind of lost in translation. And I found, like, towards the end, that I kind of, kind of understood what they were saying to me without the translator. Just you know, they they use their hands a lot. They're very like, and their face. And um, it was uh, difficult to start, but towards the end, I could kind of communicate with everyone and. Man, they're such a beautiful place and such special people that um, are so connected to the, to the environment. I mean, we found this route that gives you water in the middle of the desert. Like, I would have, I would have died of thirst a long time ago, and they were able to find this, this route that's filled with water, and I was, that was really amazing to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, the story also touches on you needing saving while dealing with mental health. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I think that was during that time, during lockdown, you know, like I, I, I was feeling so claustrophobic, just all these rules, like you couldn't, you know, you couldn't go outside, you couldn't walk your dog, you couldn't go into the ocean, I couldn't, and it was no choice of my own, it wasn't like I was injured or anything, it was a pandemic, so we were just forced to be isolated, and yeah, I just found that really tough, and I uh, really needed to, to get out there, and um and just experience what it's like to be a human again, you know, not locked up in, in like a cage per se. Mm. And what are you trying to achieve with this documentary? What is the end result? Yeah, trying to get people to reconnect with nature, to, to realize that uh, we're, we're human beings and we, we should be out there. We should be, you know, walking and um, in the mountains and um, enjoying nature, but also to protect it because it's such a fragile ecosystem. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, we, I don't know that we were designed to, you know, to live in our cars and our, and our, you know, in these big cities that we do live in. And I think it's important that even if you do to go walk in a park, to go have a swim, just reconnect with nature. Mm. Is the message coming across, though? Are we reaching enough people to make them aware of what is currently going on with the environment? I'm not sure that we are. That's that's a great uh, great point. Um, it's it's such a like when you get into it, it's such an overwhelming issue. Um, there's so many issues, and um, I think the more people that that you know really realize how important it is that we protect uh, the environment and how important it is for our mental health, for you know the planet's health. Because you know if we destroy the environment, there's you can have all the technology in the world, it's not going to help us, you know, if you have Instagram, it's not going to help you if we don't have any running water. So it's so important that we, we try and protect all these fragile ecosystems. Mm -hmm. All right, Frank, thank you so much for talking to us. I'm going to let you go before right. load shedding hits. Thank you so much for talking to us. Pro <laughs> Sorry, server. To... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, one more thing. I just want to say you can go watch the film on uh, Corona's YouTube page. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't checked it out, check it out on, on their page. Thank you so much. All right, Frank, thank you so much for talking to All us. Right. Frank Solomon is a pro surfer, environmentalist, and we were in conversation about a new docu-film uh, titled In Between San and Insanity. All right, quick ad break. We touch on Everyone Durban tourism after we'll this. Stay with us. Oh, wow, thank you. 